So recently I discovered that this thing here exists. It is a super tiny RTX 4060 from Gigabyte. And look, you know, I don't recommend the 4060. Let's be perfectly clear about that. The price to performance is just not there, but we have to admit this is a really interesting product. It can still run eSport games at 240 Hertz. It can do a little bit of DLSS and maybe a bit of light ray tracing too. The problem is I haven't really found a PC case that I'd really want to use this with. There is the Laser 3D HT5, which is small, but surprisingly still over five liters in volume. And then there's the Velka 3, which comes in at just four. But even in the Velka 3, installing a low profile GPU would leave some empty space not being used. So potentially there does exist a hardware layout out there that is more space efficient and smaller. So I'm gonna try it and make it. But before we do that, I went on a search for the smallest PC components that you can build with. That way we'll know for sure that this thing is truly as small as possible. Uh, the biggest component is this thing right here. It is the ITX motherboard and it doesn't really matter which one you use, they're all the same size, but the one that we have here has like some pretty low profile heat sinks and it will be enough to run our i5-13400F under gaming loads. As for cooling the CPU, there's no chance any liquid cooling will be involved in here. There's no space for it, uh, but we do have space for the 47 mil tall Alpenphone Blackridge, which yeah, there are CPU coolers that are smaller than this, but I don't think we'll need them. This thing is supremely compact. I've used it a bunch of times and the performance is like way better than you'd expect. The power supply is where it gets really tricky though. For a typical ITX gaming rig, I'd usually reach for this. It's an SFX unit, which in a normal PC is extremely small. But for a super tiny PC that we want to build, I'd maybe consider something else like this, a flex ATX unit, which is even smaller. These don't have modular cables and are typically lower rated, but they will save you a bunch of space. Recently though, I found something even smaller than that from a company called HDplex. And I've used some HDplex units in the past, but this new model is super impressive. This is the world's smallest all-in-one ATX power supply. There's no need for an external power brick. It barely takes up any space at all. And it is completely passively cooled too with no internal fan. It's only rated for about 250 watts, which sounds criminally low for a gaming PC in 2024. But considering our 46 60 tops out at 115 watts and our CPU is only going to be like 65 watts on top of that things should be completely fine at least on paper if it's not I also picked up their 500 watt unit which is a bit bigger but still extremely compact considering what it can do and then of course there's the highlight of the build which is the low profile 4060 and I was really surprised at how heavy and dense this thing was when I first picked it up because it's so small I just expected it to be like one of those cheap flimsy coolers that you see on like a GT. 1050 or a 1650, but it actually looks like Gigabyte have really tried to squeeze a bunch of cooling in this tiny form factor. I also like the location of the 8-pin power connector, which should mean that we don't need to use any low-profile adapters. So these are all the parts, and now it's time to build the case. But before we do that, we need to make some rough 3D models of the stuff that we're using. Uh, at least this way we can know the exact dimensions of the hardware that we're working with. You know, I've built in a lot of really compact ITX cases over the years, and this seems Seems to be how they're made, right? You see what kind of hardware you're going to be using, you orientate them as efficiently as possible, and then your case is effectively, you know, shrink wrapped around that. And this was the start. GPU plugged right into the board, power supply over on the right. I mean, this looks like the most space optimized layout that is possible. And it was only 3.7 liters, but I knew that once I had made some extra room and brackets and the side panels, it would be closer to four, which is basically the same size as the Velka 3, a bit bigger than I had imagined. So I played around a bit more. I moved the power supply above the motherboard and turns out this was a little bit better. Now down to just 3.5 liters. This is where things start to get really crazy. The GPU was the tallest part in the entire build. So if I just laid it vertically and used a riser cable instead, and if I swapped the 47 mil tall Blackridge cooler to the 37 mil tall L9 from Noctua, then I can get things down to just 2.7 liters. 
which is mind-blowingly small. I knew at this point that this is something that I just had to make. I started with the motherboard tray and the IO shield, then the mounting for the tiny power supply, and then the GPU mounting, which I knew I couldn't use the full-size bracket that it came with, so I had the idea to mount the back of the card just directly to the case with those four screws. This probably wouldn't work, but I decided to give it a shot anyway. But at this point, despite how small the starting frame is, it's too big to print in a single go on my 3D printer. So I sliced the part into two separate pieces and then added some screw points to get them locked in. I also added some support posts just underneath the graphics card, and then we have ourselves a pretty good looking frame to start with. Now I've never 3D modeled a PC case before, so I knew this first print would likely have some major errors and problems. And I was right. There were some obviously incorrect measurements and tolerances that needed correcting before I could even install the motherboard. But after that, and a couple more revisions, uh, here it is, the super compact, tiny frame for our PC. And I've got to say, I am super happy with how this turned out. The IO shield finally fits now. That did take a little bit of tweaking to get right. The motherboard is completely locked in. I've also added a power supply socket at the top, rails at the front as well for where the front panel will slide in. And I've also added a clamp for our 4060. So this clamps down the end of the graphics card and completely locks it into place. Otherwise, we just have those four tiny screws, which really weren't holding it as tightly as I would hoped. Oh yeah, and since it didn't have a proper power Power switch laying around. I actually made one out of a spare mechanical key switch, which is kind of cool. You know, it gives the build a nice little retro feel whenever you turn it on. As for the side panels, they're simple enough, maybe the easiest part of the entire build to 3D model. But here, I really wanted to pay tribute to one of the best ultra compact cases of all time, the Skyreach 4 Mini. I've always thought that the panel cutouts in the Skyreach looked really nice and aesthetic. So I tried to incorporate them as best I could. I've also copied the unique split faceplate design from the T1, which I've always found really appealing. And I've got to say this tiny DIY box turned out pretty good. The only thing left to do now is build it. First, we join the two frames together, first at the center here and then near the IO. All of these screw points, by the way, are self-tapping as well and seem to work pretty much perfectly. Next is our motherboard, which is just like any other PC case. Finally, on this model, I was able to get the IO shield positioning dialed in. Our tiny power supply is next, and I did have to shorten and resolder these three cables here just to make this small gap possible, but that's easy enough. I might end up making some perfect length cables for this build eventually, but the stock ones from HDplex, they are pretty long, but they do actually fit. Next, we have our 4060. We have four screws at the back near the IO, the end clamp with three screws there. And then we have the riser cable, which does need to be gently folded in a very specific way, but does fit. And then we have the custom power switch and side panels, which go on at the end. And there it is, our tiny 3D printed 3.6 liter mini PC case with an RTX 4060. To be honest, I can't believe this actually worked. As for performance, I really wanted this thing to be able to run Overwatch 2 at 1440p, 240Hz, and it does that pretty comfortably. But this is where things started to go really wrong. The case started to melt. I made the huge mistake here of using PLA for the 3D printed plastic, which is really easy to print and doesn't release any harmful fumes, but it also has the lowest glass transition point or softening point out of any 3D printer filament. The top panel started to cave in and the front panel was deforming really badly. All of my hard work, days of 3D printing, all just gone to waste. I was so excited to show you guys this project, but it didn't even last 20 minutes. But while PLA has a glass transition point of just 60 degrees, which is the point where it starts softening like this, uh, ABS is closer to 100. So that should be enough to avoid any serious deformation or melting like we see here, uh, at least until I get my hands on some even more heat resistant plastics like polycarbonate. And since I need to reprint a bunch of these panels, it's worth adding some ventilation at the top too. This was a huge oversight by me. And honestly, I thought since the 4060 only had a TDP of around 100 watts that this wouldn't be necessary, but I've never been more wrong. The only thing now was to patiently wait and just hope that this thing could work. And it did. The top ventilation helped a lot in keeping the case cool, and the panels were not even getting close to warm enough now to start deforming. So more ventilation while printing in ABS, just to be sure, that seemed to do the trick. Both the 4060 and our i5 CPU were sitting around the mid 70s, which is more than fine for gaming temperatures at full load. 
At the same time, our tiny 250 watt power supply seems to be handling things just fine as well. The whole build just worked perfectly. I'll be the first to say though that the panel fitment definitely needs some work. You know, there's quite a lot of compression and stuff like that. I've made the mistake of modeling this like it was made with metal and like it has a lot more support than it actually does. Simply put, with plastic, you need a lot more joinery, a lot more connecting parts and support. That sort of stuff should be easy enough to add now that I know where it needs it. And I think in one or two more revisions, I can get this looking and feeling a lot more solid. And I will leave the 3D files for this one linked down below in the description that's kind of been the vision for this project you know something super compact super cool but also something that you guys can print at home potentially on your own desktop 3d printer maybe wait a couple more weeks though that way you won't have the same kind of issues that uh, i still have here uh but yeah i'm definitely looking forward to improving it a lot more in the future and turning this into a truly flawless console destroyer